Dear participants and colleagues, in the framework of this virtual training, I will now present for about 15 minutes on the team Phenotypic Diversity and Reproductive Biology of the Coconut Palm. After showing and celebrating the amazing diversity of coconut varieties, we will explain the coconut reproductive biology and its consequences. One of these consequences is of particular interest to us. The specificities of the coconut reproductive biology have made complex and hard the selection work carried out by farmers over the centuries. We will finish by discussing how merging traditional and scientific knowledge can help farmers to produce and use better coconut seed nuts. Coconut trees show an extraordinary varietal diversity, first expressed by the color, size, shape, and the composition of the fruits. Varieties also differ by the size and the growth of the trunk, by their abilities to produce or not plenty fruits or a lot of toddy, and by their tolerance to diseases, pest, and climatic hazards. This diversity remains little known to the public. It is underexploited at the cultural, commercial and industrial level. Coconut varieties are now classified in four main types, but the two most abundant categories are tall types and dwarf types. Tall types represent at least 80% of all existing coconut palms. They generally form quite heterogeneous cross-pollinating populations. Talls can grow at a rate of more than 50 cm annually when young and flower at 6 to 10 years. The dwarf types are generally associated with man habitat. They are often called dwarfs, thin-trunked dwarfs, fragile dwarfs or Malayan-type dwarfs. Dwarf types grow at a rate of 15 to 30 cm annually, and usually start flowering 12 to 30 months after field planting. Apart from their usually short height, these varieties show a combination of common characteristics, self-pollination, small size of organs, precocity, and rapid emission of inflorescences. Then, how to recognize them? Just have a look at the stem and at the bases of the leaves. Of relatively smooth aspect and clear color, the stem carries regular marks. Each leaf produced by the palm creates, on the stem, a leaf scar in the shape of a crescent. The gap between two leaf scars makes it possible to distinguish the two types of coconut palm. For the tall type, the distance between two leaf scars is generally higher than 5 cm. For the dwarf types, it does not exceed 2.5 cm. Compact dwarfs varieties are native to the Pacific region. Traditionally called as New Laker or New Lair, they were already known in the 1850s at least in Fiji, Tonga, and Samoa. Compact dwarf varieties are also available in Hawaii and are generally called Samoan dwarfs. Except for the very short internodes, which reduce trunk height and produce a dense leaf canopy, many other characteristics resemble those of tall varieties. Compact dwarfs and their hybrids are probably one of the best possible future for coconut agriculture. Palms are of small in size, less sensitive to cyclones and damages caused by Oryctes beetles than many other varieties. In 2023, a modification of the international nomenclature was proposed to define a particular coding for the international names and abbreviation of compact dwarf types. The coconut palm is very sensitive to environmental variations. To illustrate this subject, I will take two examples. The first is that of the Madang brown dwarf in Papua New Guinea. The Madang brown dwarf is autogamous and genetically very homogeneous. In Papua it produces rather large fruits, of good composition, and with round nuts. We have introduced it into the Ivory Coast collection. Curiously, in Africa, it began to produce many small, elongated fruits of less good composition. In Ivory Coast, this collection plot was planted on quaternary sands. These coconut trees were planted with care, using the nursery plastic bag technique. They received abundant but standard manure. However, this plot had been cultivated in the traditional way with cassava which had gradually exhausted the soil. A drought occurred about two years after planting. Then the coconut trees never recovered. Then, even with abundant manure, they continued to produce many fruits, 
but these fruits were small and of poor composition. Finally, from the Ivory Coast gene bank, we sent the Madang Brown back to Vanuatu, where it was planted on rich volcanic soils. In Vanuatu, we then observed an even better fruit composition than in Papua. Yet it is the same genotype, planted in different environmental conditions. The coconut tree can often be compared to a human being. Imagine that a child is brought up in poor conditions, that for 10 years, his food is insufficient and generates many deficiencies and developmental delays. Even if the situation then improves, the child will have accumulated negative characteristics of growth and development that abundant food can never erase. It is the same for the coconut tree. A proverb says, take care of your coconut tree for five years, it will take care of you for the rest of your life. On the left, you can see an Indian variety called Lakadives Microtall. We see that on the same coconut tree, the size of the fruits is very variable from one bunch to another. The fruit size is often inversely proportional to the number of fruits in the bunch. The size of the fruits can also vary greatly depending on the nature of the pollen that fertilized it. The smallest nuts are often those resulting from self-pollination. On the left, the top photo shows a very productive Malaysian green dwarf, with an X-shaped canopy. A year later, the same coconut tree, photographed down from the same angle, looked completely different. Not only was the production lower, but the shape of its canopy changed and became circular. This alternative biennial production is quite common in dwarf coconut palms. In both cases, these are examples of seasonal phenotypic differences expressed by a genotype. Understanding the reproductive biology of the coconut palm is crucial for increasing breeding efficiency. The coconut inflorescence, called spadix, by botanists, is 1 to 2 meter long. It consists of a central axis or rachis, with 10 to 40 lateral branches called spikelets, or raculi by botanist. The inflorescence has both male and female flowers. Spikelets are about 30 to 55 centimeters long and bears 100 to 300 male flowers from the top to down. Most of the spikelets, but not all, have one or more female flowers at their base. The total number of female flowers in an inflorescence from zero, especially at the first flowering, to a few hundreds. The male flowers are the first to open, beginning at the top of each spikelet and proceeding towards the base. The male flowers are small and oblong in shape, and start to mature as soon as the inflorescence opens. Their bracts open and pollen is released from the anthers. Each normal inflorescence produces approximately 200 to 300 million pollen grains. In nature 75% of shed pollen losses its viability after 12 hours. This point is important if we want to develop a pollination method that can be used by farmers and gardeners. The female flowers are globular in shape. Their diameter is 2 to 3 centimeters. These flowers become receptive early in the morning as indicated by a reflexed and moist stigmatic surface. In addition to the stigmatic appearance, Nectar containing 9 to 12 percent sucrose is produced from the receptive flowers throughout the day. When receptive, the stigma is expanded as three erect teeth. The stigmas remain receptive to pollen for one to four days before they dry up. Once pollination period is over, the stigma necroses, and you can see a black dot at the end of the flower, at the place of the stigmas. If fertilization is successful, the flower generally develops into a coconut. A variety is a distinct, often intentionally bred subset of a species that will behave uniformly and predictably when grown in an environment to which it is adapted. Widest sense includes cultivar, ecotype, landrace, etc. Cultivar is a cultivated variety. Genotype means the hereditary constitution of an individual. Phenotype means the appearance of an organism with respect to a particular character or group of characters, physical, biochemical, or physiological, as a result of the interaction of its genotype and its environment. Inflorescence is the part of the plant that bears the flowers, 
including all its bracts, branches, and flowers, but excluding unmodified leaves. Coconut inflorescences have both male and female flowers. Although both wind and insects bring about pollination, insect pollination is more predominant. During the first six weeks from pollination, up to 70% of flowers fall off. At harvest time or after 11 to 12 months from fertilization, an average fruit set of 30% or less is common. Installing honeybee colonies in coconut plantations and seed gardens for enhancing pollination and fruit set is beneficial. In French Polynesia, Several farmers said that if the plantation is well maintained, the presence of hives for bees increases the harvest by 15 to 30 percent. So, each coconut palm is bisexual, and produces with both female and male flowers. It can therefore pollinate itself. Most dwarf-type coconut palms reproduce in that way. In tall type coconut palms, the pollination mechanisms are more complicated. To understand them, it needs to be known that the female phase of an inflorescence corresponds to the period when female flowers are receptive, and the male phase begins as soon as the inflorescence opens and ends when the last male flower falls. In some varieties, all the male flowers ripen and fall before the female flowers are receptive. In that case, cross-pollination takes place. It apparently involves two different parents. But another phenomenon further complicates this mechanism. It is also possible for pollination to take place between two successive inflorescences on the same palm. The female phase of a given inflorescence may partially coincide with the male phase of the following inflorescence. The coconut palm is therefore a species in which different reproduction options exist side by side. Most coconut growers have the practical experience of harvesting seed nuts on a coconut palm selected for a specific purpose, such as high yield, sweet coconut water, or sweet husk, and get different characteristics on the progeny. But most of them do not know why. In 2018, during the surveys for preparing the varietal catalogue of French Polynesia, I travelled to around 15 islands and atolls. I have been working on the coconut tree for more than 30 years. However, it was only when I visited Aratika Atoll in the Tuamotus that I understood how difficult and thankless the selection work carried out by the farmers was, with a low success rate. In 2023, no scientist has yet published on this subject. In Aratika, a coconut palm with soft and sweet husk, called kaipoa, was reputed to be medicinal. The husk is whitish when mature. Its owner wanted to multiply it. He collected 12 seeds from this coconut tree and planted them. He waited 10 years to see the result. Of the 12 coconut palms planted, only one of these progenies reproduced the special characteristics of its parent. Only one of the descendants produced soft and sweet coconuts. Among their traditional knowledge, Polynesians classify coconut and coconuts palms as female and male according to four distinct classification systems. One female, male descriptive grouping is linked to the shape of the fruits. Two more groupings are linked to the way of fruits germinate. And the last one is linked to the general aspect of the palm. Females are always preferred to males as planting material. Now, what is the challenge for coconut farmers and gardeners? In our opinion, farmers should appropriate the scientific knowledge on coconut reproductive biology. The breeding carried out by the farmers is often not very effective because they do not control the reproduction of their coconut trees. When they harvest a seed nut, they know the mother of this seed nut but they do not know who its father is. Scientists use a reliable method of controlled pollination, but this method is very expensive, difficult to implement, and gives a low yield. During training sessions held in 2023 in Papua New Guinea and Fiji, we started to create and test simpler methods of controlled pollination that can be easily used by farmers. These methods are based on bagging individually female flowers or bagging whole emasculated inflorescences. We will try to test these methods also in Hawaii.
Dear participants and colleagues, thank you for listening.